What's going on everybody, All Edge Tutorials back here with a tools tutorial today. Um, if you guys haven't watched the video on uh, where I just explained the basic interface, as a quick start guide, I advise you to watch that down in the description. But we're just going to hop right into it. So we have our selection tool, which is arguably the most important tool in Illustrator. It allows us to basically substantiate things that haven't really um, come to life. So for example, if I use the pen tool and I draw something just really fast, I can use V to go back to my selection. It'll highlight the entire object and I can go around and just move the entire object. So that's what the selection tool is for, is for you to select, move, you can resize right here. You can hold shift if you want it to be proportional. Um, and you can also rotate if you just um, hover over one of the edges, you can actually click and you can rotate like that. So the selection tool allows us to do a lot of things. You can see me use it to basically cancel some of the commands and go back to just uh, a clean command slate. Okay. So the next command we're going to go over is the direct selection tool. Now, the only difference between uh, selection tool and direct selection tool is that the direct selection tool, which is shortcut key A, allows us to adjust uh, anchors. So these are the little points that are basically propping this shape up. Uh, direct selection tool allows us to basically select these guys and modify these guys. You can also see that there are these handles on the anchors that allows you to adjust the angles on these shapes. So direct um, selection tool allows us to do that. Uh, another thing that is pretty cool is if we just make something with a rigid edge, we can see that the direct selection tool allows us to round off the edges. So if you just have one of the if you just drag on one of them without double clicking into it, it'll try to round off all of the edges. I'm going to undo. If I double click on just that point, you can see the anchors on these guys look different. Then I can just round one of the edges. So that is our selection tool and direct selection tool V and A. Okay, next one we're gonna go over is the pen tool. I'm gonna skip these two for now. Um, the pen tool allows us to basically draw any shape that we really want freely as a pen. So you can hold down and drag the handles in order to make your shape. Um, and I've always found that the less, the lesser amount of anchors that you have on these pen tools, the better your shape is going to look. So here I made a pretty ugly shape, but it's okay. It's for the sake of, of our tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and just close that to where we started, press V so we can switch to another tool. And then, um, yeah, that's basically what the pen tool really does. You can also right click on it. You can add different anchor points, delete different anchor points. Um, a lot of these ones where you see the little arrow on the bottom, right? You can right click and I'll give you more options as to what you can do with the tools. Um, that brings us to the next tool, which is the curvature tool. And this allows us to basically adjust a lot of the, the anchor points that we've, um, we've already made in our in, in our pen tool drawing. So we can, uh, we can basically smooth a lot of these curves out and yeah, just, we can make a, a new shape if we wanted to, um, with the curvature tool. Now, the next one I'm going to go over is the text tool. Uh, text tool is fairly simple. You basically select it, click and text will come out and you can type anything. So uh, on the right here, you can change the character and uh, you know the size and the kerning and everything, stroke, opacity. Uh, if you don't know what those are, I suggest you watch my previous video, uh, which talks a little bit about this. Now, the cool thing about text is if we right click on it, um, the other thing I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go over it is the type on the path. So for example, if we want text to kind of wrap around this shape over here, we can go in type on a path, select this path, and you can basically wrap text around, around shapes, right? So it'll go around the shape and you can, you can modify where that is, uh, by using these, these little handles here. Okay. Uh, next one we're going to go over is just a simple line tool. Um, with the line segment, you can also use it, uh, from the pen. So the pen will also make straight lines if you just hold, um, if you just hold shift. Uh, but yeah, the, the line tool will also do kind of the same thing. And then the, the thing about the line tool and the stroke tool, or sorry, not the stroke tool, but the pen tool is we can go in and change, uh, the color of it by going here, uh, to where the stroke is. So now you can see that's red. We can also go and click into here. 
We can also make it into a dash line so we can adjust, adjust the, the gap and the dash. Um, but we can also add arrowheads. This is very, very useful here um, to add arrowheads. You can flip them. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of things you can do with lines in Illustrator. Uh, I'm just going to go over those, but feel free to explore the line tool and the stroke options uh, in your own time. The next one we're going to go over is the rectangle tool. If you right click on the rectangle tool, it'll make a, a rounded rectangle, ellipse, a polygon, a star. If you want a specific dimension, you can just simply click on the page. It'll bring up a box. Or if you want to freehand it, you can just freehand something like that. Um, so yeah, not much to go over for these tools. They're pretty self-explanatory. Shortcut is M. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and delete that one. The next one we're going to go over is the paintbrush tool. This is more for like freehanding. Uh, it'll round off some, some of your edges. You can see uh, a lot of the iPads and the tablets do this now. It, like whatever you draw, it kind of makes it into a nice smooth uh, curve. So this is just good for uh, freehanding anything that you want to freehand. We're going to go over just eraser tool. So you can basically cut across different shapes with the eraser tool. And it'll help you, again, uh, similar to the freehand or paintbrush tool, it'll make it into a nice like straight line. It'll like smooth whatever you're trying to erase here. And what that, what that basically does is, if you guys remember, this used to be one giant shape by itself. It basically cut that into many different shapes like that. You can select these guys individually. Okay, um, next one we're going to go over is uh, the width tool. So the width tool is really important when we want to do like fancy letterings or uh, adjust the line of, sorry, adjust the, the, the width of a line or anything like that. So we can actually go in here. Uh, sorry, let me add an anchor point there. Uh, and then we can just do that. And then if we zoom in, you can see that you're able to drag this in and out. So if I drag that out, I can make the top wider and then the bottom will stay the same. And I can add a point anywhere on this um, edge. So basically I can add a point here, click OK. It'll have a point for me. If I go in here, I can adjust, you know, how wide that is. And if I want another one here, I can double click there, press OK. And if I want this to be, you know, bigger, I can do that. Um, it looks kind of weird with a dashed line, but usually this looks really good if you're trying to do like some any any like smooth graphics that need these like meandering curves. Um, the width tool is really good for that. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is uh, go over the shape builder tool. The shape builder tool is basically used to combine. Um, a lot of these things, uh, there's, there's obviously a lot more of these, but we're just going to go over, sorry, not, not here, but, um, here, the shape builder tool. So I like to actually use the shape builder on the right here. Cause it gives us more options. So we can go into window and just go into uh, pathfinder. Sorry. It's called, it's not called. Yeah. Well, shape builder and pathfinder, it's kind of the same thing, but what we can do with pathfinder is if I just make another, um, shape here. Let's say I round this one off a little bit. So let's say I have two of these guys here that I want to manipulate. Either I want to extract the, the middle or I want them to combine. I can use the pathfinder tool. So there's many modes here so you can unite them or well, it becomes one shape. You can subtract whatever is in uh, the front, I believe. Yeah, minus front. You can intersect so it takes the middle there. You can get rid of the middle there. You can divide so this becomes three different things. If I go ahead and ungroup this, you can see I can modify that by itself. I'll go ahead and undo that. You can also do things like uh, trim. So whatever is in the front, it will trim the back. And then this one goes the other way, merge. Uh, it'll basically merge the other two. Uh, and then things like crop, outline, and minus back, you guys can kind of just uh, play around with that and see what that does. But Pathfinder tool is like uh, the best way to make these compound shapes happen. You can like merge different things uh, to make new shapes and objects. Um, okay, so we're going to skip a lot of these guys. Uh, gradient tool is an interesting one. So we can basically make gradients in order to get a gradient onto a shape. We go down to where the color is and just select the gradient. Then we can go into our gradient tool and you can see this, uh, where, where like you want the darker color to be, where you want the lighter color to be. This allows us to adjust that. You can also, um, you can also adjust like the, 
yeah, like where the the change is happening. Um, so a lot of different uh, ways to to manipulate the the gradient tool. You can also just drag new gradient tools. So if you want the gradient to go a different way, you can do that as well. Uh, but yeah, gradient tool is super useful for if you want to use gradients in any of your drawings. Okay. Um, next is going to be uh, eyedropper tool, very important tool. If I want this to have the same properties as this object, I can basically use the eyedropper tool, select what I want to change and click on the thing I want to change it to. Uh, this works with text as well. So if I have text here and I change this one to maybe a different font, um, then you can see that if I want to change this, I can hit I or the eyedropper tool and it'll um, change the style into that. So it's basically a copy property um, for Illustrator. Okay, and the next one we're gonna go over is the blend tool. The blend tool is a very, very simple, uh, well, not simple, but it's very useful. So for example, if I have a square here and um, I have another square somewhere below that, like that, and say that square, actually, let's make the square in the back red and this guy in the front black. Now I want to make a blend of these two. So I can either use the blend tool here, um, right here, or what I actually prefer to do is go into objects, blend, blend options, just so you have more options as to how you want it to blend. And you can change this uh, to align to page or align to path. Uh, I like to just keep it on align to path. You can make a smoother color. So, um, if you go ahead and blend make, you can see that it'll blend the color uh, or you can change some of the other command, sorry, not commands, but you can choose some of the other options. So specific steps, let's say I want three different ones in the middle to blend from the back to the front. I can go here and just make that. And you can see that it's, it's helped me basically make all these different shapes that are actually in uh, and made by the blend tool. Okay. Um, next one, and maybe the final one we're going to go over is the artboard tool. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. You can see that everything that we did is on one canvas. Now, if we want another canvas to draw maybe another thing, then we can simply go into our artboard tool. Uh, you can see that it's going to bring up this selection around our first artboard. You can see artboard one. We can move this around. It'll move everything on the artboard. Um, but what I usually use it in uh, or four is you can change the size of these guys. So if I want it to be tabloid 11 by 17, I can do that. Uh, or I can change the orientation so I can make that landscape. Uh, but what I usually use it for is to add new artboards. So um, I basically can add new artboards. If we go back to this, then these artboards are there. They're basically canvases for us and we can, you know, do the same thing. So if you, if you just hold alt, you can just copy things over. So yeah, so these, these act as three different artboards. And if you drag, you know, artboard three, everything on artboard three will follow uh, with your cursor. But I think that's all I wanted to cover in the basic tools. Hopefully that gives you guys an idea of the things that you can use. Um, if you guys did learn anything, please don't hesitate to leave a like, uh, comment and subscribe. It really helps the channel a lot. If you have any questions, let me down, let me know in the comment section below. I will respond to every single comment. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys learned something and I'll see you guys in the next one.